Our first polo finalist is number 1019, Barwin, written by Sarah Kalenda. Barwin is a six-year-old gray gelding. The build for the desirable polo pony going to be much different than what we saw with the big stout dressage horses in the previous discipline. Usually a, a more compact horse is, is one that's well regarded to be able to play polo. And oftentimes polo riders like to have mares coming off the track. This, in this case, you have the gelding in Barwin, a horse that made 19 starts on the track and had three wins, a Pennsylvania bred who came off the track in Ohio in Mahoning Valley. Similar to the other finalists, that's my birdie. You have a good amount of polo ponies that come off the tracks in West Virginia as well as in Ohio. This is a horse that is for sale as part of the ASPCA Mega Makeover Marketplace. So going through their short work with compulsory movements, the compulsory movements include canter circles, one fast, one slow, and in each direction, lead changes in both directions, rollbacks in each direction, a halt and backing two steps, and then in the prelims, the riders had to demonstrate with their horses their stick and ball work and the different types of shots that you would see in polo and in the finale doing their short work and then they'll have the chance to pick up the sticks and participate in a seven minute chucker. And that is time for Barwin and Sarah Kalenda. The next finalist, number 1187, that's my birdie with the Willowbrook Polo team from Canfield, Ohio. Horse ridden in the finals by Michael Grubert, a thoroughbred makeover veteran. This is a horse more in the line of what you would see for a polo pony coming off the track, a young filly, four years old, lightly raced at a, a couple of races in her home state of Ohio back in 2019. And so some similarities between what you'd see on the track and what you'll see in a polo field, the busyness of having a lot of horses around you, perhaps even going in different directions. Nice flying lead change there. And also to deal with the added distraction when the rider is a stick and there's a ball on the ground and, and so a uh, polo horse often very bomb proof as well.
So we have a blue team and a red team, and we have our two finalists in Barwin, bridal number 1019. It looks like Barwin is on the blue team. And Sarah Kalenda has a number one on the back of her jersey. And that's my birdie. Now Michael Gruber climbs aboard. And he's on the red team. And he's number one as well with that's my birdie. So those are the two horses that are being judged. And it looks like warm-up is just about done, and we'll get the games underway. All right, fans, are you ready? It's time for the ever popular makeover chucker. We have the blue team and the red team, and we even have a referee, it looks like. First touch for That's My Birdie and Michael Gruber, one of the two finalists, wide to the left of the goal. And Michael following up the shot and getting it in on That's My Birdie. So the red team will get the first goal of the game. The two class of 2020 finalists are each joined by two teammates. That's my birdie with another shot towards goal. And did it hit the post or did it go in? We're going to say it's still a one goal game as the blue team now tries to change directions. <laughs> Another chance on goal for the red team and it's overrun, but a teammate there to follow it up. High shot, in for the goal. Jonathan, I've sort of hung you out to dry on this one here on the live streaming because I um, don't know how to do this. And I did try it once when I was a jockey up at Saratoga. I was invited to the polo fields to throw out the first ball. And they let me get on a horse and go in the back and just try to hit the ball by myself. Really hard to do, <laughs> just on a horse by yourself. So this is so much harder than it looks. Oh, 100%.
Although I do have to say some of them aren't exactly making it look easy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the professionals assessment. do make it look pretty easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in previous years we've had a, a good group of professionals that come out here and they're at full gallop leaning off the sides of their horses and it, it, it shows you, gives you perspective that like this is, this is where you start when you're learning how to do this. Polo Big here, the University of Kentucky with a very good college polo team. Red team continuing to put on the offensive display here. We'll have the 2020 finals today, 2021 tomorrow. And another shot towards goal for that's my birdie and Michael Gruber. Blue team just looking to clear it out and good defense there after getting the goal. Two minutes remaining. Great job by the red team, continuing to have good offensive chances, but also anytime the blue team has tried to clear it long, the red team is right there to turn the ball the other direction. Barwin made a run at that ball with Sarah Kalenda. And now here comes the blue team. Shot from the right wing, rolling towards goal, and it's in. And blue is very popular in Lexington, so the blue team getting a strong cheer after that goal. Well, now I know who I'm rooting for. I went to U of L, so if it comes down to red against blue, I'm <laughs> going to say the cards are dominating. <laughs> yes, it's a great rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds remaining. Let's leave it all out there, guys. Oh, it's just sitting in front of the goal. Clear it. Nice defense there. And that is time for the class of 2020, Chucker. And one of the cool things about this year's mega makeover is we will see them back tomorrow. So I'm sure there'll be some strong locker room talk and some video sessions and uh, regrouping perhaps by the blue team and the red team can't rest on their laurels. And then they'll 
all come together tomorrow. And one of the great things about polo is the sportsmanship as well. So both teams exiting the arena and concluding the polo competition and I did not catch that. we'll have the awards for polo coming up shortly and then we will turn our attention to freestyle. Thank you to the United States Polo Association for sponsoring the polo competition. Prelims took place at the Secretariat Polo Field and our judges Chris Strataman, the manager of Orchard Hill Polo, Charlie Muldoon, the owner of Summer Hill Polo, and the U.S. Polo's Umbires LLC Executive Director. And now here are the results for the class of 2020 at the Mega Makeover for Polo, sponsored by the United States Polo Association. Finishing in second place, also finishing as the top amateur, number 1019, Sarah Kalenda and Barwen. And the winner for the class of 2020 for Polo, sponsored by the United States Polo Association, also the top finishing team and the winner of the Best Conditioned Award, sponsored by Nina Bonney, with a score of 109.25. Congratulations to number 1187, that's my birdie and the Willowbrook polo team.